I'm really sorry. I know you guys have been enjoying the random creepy stories I've been posting, but I need to talk about the test calls a bit more. We don't talk about them much in control. Like I said, we treat them as a minor annoyance and try not to think about them too much. And I've never mentioned it to Jack. I think he'd panic and ask me to quit. It's quite therapeutic to be able to talk about them on here, so thanks for giving me this outlet. Naomi spoke about them last night, and now I'm a bit worried. She's been working in control for six months, so she's still settling in. I see my callings so much thanks to crappy night shifts and a shared sick sense of humor that they're practically family. But Naomi has always been a bit quieter. She nearly quit after her first test call, apparently, but they convinced her to stay. It was just the two of us in the kitchen at about two in the morning. I'm one of those weirdos who can eat a cooked dinner anytime, so I was shoveling microwave macaroni and cheese into my mouth while she drank coffee. You can't work in ambulance control if you don't like coffee. You'll need it for the night shifts. I've taken two test calls already tonight. She said out of nowhere. From the way she said it, I think she expected me to be as freaked out as she looked. Literally, she looked like she'd seen a ghost. I nodded and carried on eating. Our breaks are short, and trust me, the last thing you want to be giving CPR instructions, and all you can think about is how hungry you are. If you do this job, you eat when you can. Besides, two test calls in one night isn't anything to write home about. It's bad luck, more than anything. In the same way that landing an uncomplicated birth call is good luck, and getting stuck on the line to Mr. Felton, who wants to talk about his stools in immense gruesome detail, is very bad luck. What do you think would happen if we answered? Naomi asked quietly. My heart just about stopped, and the macaroni fell off my fork. We don't talk about test calls, never mind the possibility of answering them. It would be bad, I said, hoping my tone made it clear I didn't want to get involved with this conversation. We'd disappear, and never be heard from again. We don't know that, Naomi said. She sounded so thoughtful, almost hopeful, and it was enough to tear me away from dinner to stare at her. She just looked lost in thought, like she was actually considering answering a test call. No one's disappeared since either of us started, have they? Maybe it's all just a prank. It'd be a sick prank. I muttered. I don't like where this conversation was going. I'm getting shivers just thinking about it now. They prank everyone, Naomi replied matter-of-factly. She has a point. After my first emergency call for something simple like a broken leg, I think, the dispatcher came over and told me the crew arrived and found the patient dead. They hadn't, of course, but I thought I'd killed someone on my first day. Like I said, sick sense of humor. It's pretty much mandatory. I didn't want to talk to her about it. The test calls creep me out more than I'd like to admit. I deal with death on a daily basis. I've listened to people's last breaths and been the final person they ever spoke to. I'm not a wimp, but it's unsettling. You do always have that little chill down your spine when you hear the beep in your ear of a new call coming in. Just in case it's a test call. Your breath catches in your throat. Your chest constricts and that is constant. We can take upwards of a hundred calls per handler in a 12-hour shift. 
that's a significant part of your day, having a minor panic attack until you hear a human voice on the other end of the line. I suddenly felt really sick after that. I think the conversation killed my appetite stone cold dead, so I chucked the rest of my dinner in the bin and left the kitchen. I didn't say another word to Naomi, even after she came back from the kitchen. The queasiness didn't pass, my stomach made an ungodly noise, and I came off the call just in time to throw up in the bin next to my desk. That was the end of the shift for me. Will, the control manager for that evening, came over and told me in no uncertain terms to head home. Ambulance control isn't your average office. It's a gray-walled, windowless box where time ceases to exist, and if one person gets a bug, everyone gets it. They don't take any chances with vomiting. I've been sent home in a strict 48-hour exclusion period. I didn't even acknowledge Naomi as I left. She pissed me off with all her test call talk. I'm sure it's her fault I threw up. I didn't feel queasy at all until she started talking about it. I got in the car and drove home at 3 in the morning, feeling like shit. I could have done with venting about it to Jack, but that would have involved waking him up and explaining the entire test call saga. I'm not ready to do that yet. So that's where I am now, updating you all from my sick bed. Not a huge amount to report, other than feeling like crap, and a weird colleague with an apparent death wish. Maybe the vomiting was fate, intervening to save me from finishing the shift with Naomi. It would have been really awkward. I must have built up some good karma from all the calls I've taken. A stomach bug isn't my usual idea of good karma, but who are we to question fate? So far, I've been a model patient. I've quarantined myself from the rest of the world. I'm eating dry toast and keeping myself hydrated. And I haven't called 999. That's more can be said for most of the population. I'm not feeling sick anymore, so I think it's just one of those 24-hour bugs. And I'll be fighting fit and ready to start mentoring my newbie next week. Could the test calls be a prank? I don't really want to take the risk and find out, but it'd fit in with the sick sense of humor they all have. Maybe they're waiting for one of us to answer the calls and have a nervous breakdown, and then they'll burst out laughing and congratulate themselves on their epic prank. We'd have heard something in the news if people went missing. They can't keep every single media outlet quiet. What about the families? Surely they'd be putting posters up of all sorts. These test calls are the telecom operator checking the line, and when we don't answer, they assume there's a line fault. It's the obvious explanation. I'm going to challenge James on it when I get back at work. He did a great job of convincing me after my first test call, so I'm going to really push him for answers. Let's see how long he lasts before he cracks. I want to tell them to keep an eye on Naomi. I know she's probably just curious about the test calls. It's natural. I still want to know what the deal is with them, but it's worrying when anyone considers answering them. I'll check who's scheduled to work with Naomi next week and let them know what she was saying. Maybe they'll be able to take her aside and have a quick word. I'll update you all on what James says when I'm back at 